Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our Trailblazer uh, session. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, this is, I think, my fifth event with the Travel Cat um, company itself. Um, and we finally have amazing um, and awesome people with experience here, awesome cat lovers with experience here. So I'm really excited to get this session started. Um, so we're just going to kind of go around uh, with our speakers just to kind of lightly introduce themselves just because we are kind of strict on time right now. Um, so um, I guess starting with Haley, um, if you could just name uh, yourself as well as your cats, uh, where you're tuning in from, your Instagram, um, how long you've been adventuring, and a, what a, an aspiring goal for you is for you and your cats. My name is Hallie. My cats are Beth and Cleo. Um, we live in Thunder Bay, Ontario, and uh, we've been adventuring for about two summers. Uh, winters can't really adventure here. And um, an aspiring goal is to get Cleo on the paddleboard. Beth currently paddleboards, but we'd like to get Cleo on there too. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Um, we also have Sam in the chat. Sam's also kind of supporting the chat. So Sam, if you want to introduce yourself either through the chat or through an audio, um, you're more than welcome to as well. Hi, everyone. This is Sam. Can you hear me? Thumbs up. Yes. Awesome. Uh, so this is Sam. And my cat is Bowen, and we're at Mr. Dot Bowen Cat on Instagram. Um, he's been traveling since he was three weeks old well, when he was found abandoned in a box. And we started the backpack, I would say, maybe four years ago. So he's six years old now, and we do lots of hikes as much as we can. Nice to meet everyone. <laughs> Awesome. So I saw that Odin, uh, Odin's mom and Odin just came into the chat room. So we're kind of just doing brief introductions. Uh, so if you could just state your name, your Instagram handle, as well as your kitty's names, and then like how many years of experience or how much experience you have, um, as well as um, just like an aspiring goal that you wish uh, that you and Odin could be able to like reach it somehow or achieve essentially. <laughs> Not sure if you could hear me and I think you might be muted. Oh, there I we go. can hear you. Sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, could you repeat the question, please? Yeah. Um, so we're just doing a brief introduction. So you could just state uh, basically your name, uh, your kitty's name, how long you've been adventuring from um, or for uh, where you're tuning in from, as well as just an aspiring goal that you're hoping that you and Odin can okay. accomplish. Uh, yeah, my name is Anne and I live in Norway. So um, very cold here. So that can be kind of challenging uh, going outside with a cat in this weather. Um, my cat Odin, he's uh, just turned one years old. Tomorrow is his birthday. <laughs> yeah, so he's been going out in his harness and his backpack since he was four months old. Yeah, cool. so our goal is to go and visit different places. Now we've just been in our garden because uh, I wanted him to get used to feeling safe outside. But our goal is to... Um, like go into the mountains or more into like trails in the woods yeah so yeah, yeah that's our goal yeah awesome. yeah thank you so much for sharing and thank you so much for being with us right here now um so um my name is ryan i'm uh one of the co-parents to newt emo and t i have three cats um and basically i we're, we're tuning in from seattle washington um our instagram handles inside the actual title of the name right there at newt the adventure cat and I would say that we've been training, honestly, for about five plus years. I've been doing adventuring outdoors with my cats, and that ranges from anywhere between like actual hiking, trail trailing, or um, paddle boarding. It can range from like any water sport to like any dry sport is what we're usually doing. Um, and then an aspiring goal for myself is to do at least some surfing or maybe even some backcountry snowboarding with my cats eventually, like they're really big into snow. So that's definitely something I would really love to do eventually in the future, but yeah. Um, but thank you everyone for being able to like introduce yourself and then being here as well. And I'm super excited for this session to get started. Um, so I do have a couple questions for each of the speakers um, here just to share their kind of personal experiences as well as tips and suggestions to the audience as well. Um, and again, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to chime in in the chat. Sam's there to support, to be able to help out with any answers or questions needed as well. So, but yeah, um, so starting off, uh, kind of basically addressing everyone and whoever well, wishes to start is more than welcome to. Um, so what kind of steps or checklist do you guys usually undergo or follow uh, prior to actually um, going on your adventures? But yeah, like uh, usually like a, a good checklist and step list, like before I even actually get to go out, I do like to usually research where I'm going prior because I want to look at the weather. I want to look at whether cats are 
um, available to be, be there in that space, in that environment. Usually when it says it's pet friendly, it doesn't necessarily mean it's cat friendly. So you want to keep that in mind, especially when you're going like trailblazing or out on trails or in uh, national parks. Um, of course, you want to have like an essential checklist of like all the materials you need to go out and kind of adventuring out just like a harness, a backpack or, or what so. But um, usually I do a lot of like prior research before actually adventuring out. So um, what about you? Um, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. It's not Haley, it's Hallie, right? It's Hallie, yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make um, sure. <laughs> that's okay. We do a lot of camping with Beth. So um, I don't really have a checklist, I guess, but I find her stuff takes up basically as much as our stuff because I just really want to be prepared for anything with her. Um, so some things that are really helpful are like, we have a pop-up pen, um, that has like a, like mesh sides and cover on the top and bottom. So we'll use that to kind of keep her enclosed at the campsite. So we really love that. And then the other like essential when we're going camping is her, um, life jacket. So that's the big one that we always make sure we have and litter. I'll often put litter on the ground and she'll like kind of just go where the litter is. Um, so bringing around litter, stuff like that. What about you, Anne? What kind of like processes do you usually go uh, do before like actually adventuring out with Odin? Uh, like I said before, the weather is a really big challenge here. Uh, it snows, it's rain, it's windy. Um, you're from Canada, right? I'm from Seattle, so. Yeah, I've been to Seattle and I seem to recall the weather is very similar. So we actually have like thick knitted sweaters for Odin. And a challenge with that is to find a harness that can fit around a thick sweater. So actually the harness that I found that works the best is the stray harness. That's perfect for thick sweaters because you have this separate piece that goes around the neck and then this piece goes around the stomach so always when he uh, needs to wear a thick sweater this this one is perfect yeah so I kind of hope that uh, Travel Cat will make more harnesses of this type yeah um, but yeah just checking the temperatures because um, the worst thing that can happen if is if the ears of the cat starts to freeze because that's the area of the body that's it can be dangerous. I had a cat uh, that I took in, a stray cat, and he actually had ears that were uh, were destroyed because of the cold. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. So I actually have a hat that I put on on him if it's too cold. But I always check the temperature because I'm so scared that his ears are gonna freeze. Oh yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like doing that kind of previous research of like the day, as well as the adventure and area you're going to is just really paramount. But like you were saying, Anne was like, mm -hmm. the weather is a really big thing, not only just the cold, but also the heat. I saw people were chiming in, in the chat um, about how we handle like heat in certain adventures. If you guys are able to like touch up on that, like, how do you guys uh, uh, battle the heat essentially or inclement weather when it comes to adventuring outdoors? heat was kind of the heat was the reason that we got Beth into the water to begin with we went camping um and it was 31 degrees celsius which is like I guess in the 90s in Fahrenheit um and it was really hot so we just put her in the water to see how she would do and that's when we realized she really likes it she started we put her out deeper she started swimming um so that was kind of how we realize she likes water but if we don't have a lake or somewhere we will just pour water bottles on her um to help with the overheating yeah um i oh i have a siberian emu is my siberian she's the third like the three coated kind of cat is what she is and usually um i have to keep in mind about like the heat temperatures in seattle yeah it does get a little it does get cold but it also does get really hot up here um, and there's no AC in most of the buildings here. So um, we have to find a way to basically maneuver around the heat. Um, so cooling pads, like pressure activated cooling pads are really helpful, especially when you're putting them inside your backpack for like, you know, your hot cats to kind of cool down as well as like cooling bandanas are really great. Um, I also did find that like frozen churu treats are also extremely great and like also enriching for the cats as well. Not cause like, well, one, because it's really cold and two, because, you know, it's kind of basically uh, cat crack basically your cat <laughs> so 
but yeah, um, yeah, there are, there are a lot of different tips and I'm sure that Sam's probably chiming in the chat with like different kinds of tips to be able to alleviate kind of inclement weather, whether it's either heavy snow, heavy rain or anything like that. Um, with Seattle, I mean, we're really well known for our rain here. So it's, it wouldn't be a Seattle light thing to do not to have a raincoat. So all my cats have a raincoat here. Um, we also do like to put a uh, musher secret wax kind of on their paws as well. It's like basically a slick wax that helps like the snow, the water and um, any kind of moisture kind of rub right off. So it isn't sticking in between their actual paw pads themselves uh, to cause like any kind of pain or anything like that. But yeah, sorry, my cats are sitting on my questions here. <laughs> All right, um, so, um, so what are some challenges uh, you both have faced as well as you, Sam, like what are some challenges you guys have faced exploring the outdoors? And that could be anywhere between water sports, camping, urban adventures or anything like that? Um, yeah, I think for, for us too, it's a lot of like the weather, the unpredictability um, with the weather. Once we were, Beth and I were out in the middle of the lake um, paddleboarding and it started to rain, which I was not anticipating. And she has never been out in the rain. So I really didn't know how it would work. Um, but she did really well. And I basically just had to kind of adjust go on my hands and knees to calm her and we got back to shore. But I think, yeah, just, I think it all kind of ties into the weather. Um, and just having that, yeah, you just need to have that trust with your cat, I guess, if you're taking it out in these environments, um, to know that your cat won't get spooked and something bad won't happen. Um, if there is a change in plans. Yeah. And for me, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, thanks. So I know that, uh, same it's gotten hot or cold and I always check the weather report. If it's going to be hot, I look at areas that may have a river or I always carry a water bottle and my cat is used to taking baths. So I'm able to like pour water on him to cool him down. Um, another challenge, I don't know if this is part of the weather thing, but, um, other pets. So I've had dogs run up and you just have to be aware of your surroundings and having the backpack, if I see a dog that's off leash and it's barreling towards us, I pick him up and immediately zip up the backpack. Yeah, sometimes uh, I usually have my head on a swivel constantly left and right, trying to see if there are like any other dogs, any other people that usually spook your cats or like, you know, would make them feel uncomfortable. It comes to show that like you should always know and understand how in your cat's boundaries, as well as like understanding what they're comfortable with and never pushing them any further than that. Like, of course, you could always train maybe your cat to go swimming. You could always train them on the paddleboard, but you never want to push them past the boundaries that they're already setting with you. It's like always really good to understand. I wouldn't suggest going out and feeling comfortable hiking with your cat and then doing like 12 miles with them. That's definitely not something to do, but just always keep um, an eye out just for your cat's body language just, or them just like looking at you. you. You definitely know as like a cat parent, like I'm sure all of you know what your cats are comfortable with versus what they're not, so. Uh, something uh, I forgot to mention before that can be a challenge um, outside, uh, especially where we live, because we live in an urban area. Uh, so it's an apartment complex in the middle of the city. So here there can be a lot of lo loud noises. There are uh, big ships that go past straight outside our window. Um, so one thing that we uh, started early on with our cat was to get getting him used to all those city noises so that he wouldn't get spooked and run away. Uh, so now there can be construction work, there can be um, huge ships going by and he doesn't even care because he's so used to those noises. So I think that's something to think about if you're gonna take your cat outside and in a city, especially. Yeah, absolutely. I think like one of the biggest challenges I usually um, come face to face is, is just actually finding the right kind of harness for just adventuring outdoors with my cat specifically. So, but thank you so much for uh, for sharing though. <laughs> um, and then we're going to kind of go towards like the end of our questions, uh, just because we are pretty tight on time. I wanted to ask each of you as well as Sam included, like what are kind of some beginner tips that you could suggest or um, to anyone who's starting to want to kind of go out on the trails or at least be outdoors with their cats themselves? Yeah, I would say like having a way that you can ensure that your cat is safe outside while like creating that positive association with outside. Um, so what I'm actually standing at in front of right now is our catio, which I'll show you a picture of. You can see it there. Oh. Um, so they go through the window outside to the catio. Um, and this like ensures that they're safe outside. They get to enjoy, you know, all the things they like to do, but they're not 
when we're in an urban center too, like they're not getting on the street or anything like that where we can't watch them. Um, this also really helps mitigate like them trying to get out of the back door every time we come in the house um, because that they love being outside. So giving them a safe way to do this, if you can't get a catio right away, the pen I was talking about, like um, it's just like a pop-up pen it's like a baby pen but with a lid or a top uh that's really great for just getting your cats outside too yeah and then ann or sam do you guys have any tips or suggestions for anyone who's starting to begin outdoor training uh i would say start early uh that's my best tip i know a lot of people start with older cats but uh, when I got Odin, I decided to start right away. So we put him in uh, his harness when he was really little. So I bought this one. It's like tiny. <laughs> he outgrew this one really fast. But the first time I put him in this, he actually fell asleep because I guess he thought it was comfortable. Uh, but yeah, that's that's my absolute best tip to start early with putting your cat in the backpack, putting them in a harness, getting them used to car rides, because you save yourself so much work when they're used to it from they're really small. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I would say, no, no worries. I would say um, go slow also, even though I started early with my cat. Um, I think taking the time to find a carrier, then take them outside in the carrier. Like don't immediately jump into a four mile hike that takes time. And I even know recently, like we've gone to some breweries or we've gone to more crowded places. And I think I jumped in too soon and he's gotten overstimulated and started hissing and kind of getting upset. So that's a sign for me that we have to take it a little slower. So little bit by bit, and every cat's different. Some cats have no problem being outside in overstimulating environments, but mine is a, let's baby steps, baby steps, take your time. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Baby steps go a very long way. Baby steps can really be big steps actually for a cat. Um, I Like for me, I think the biggest questions a lot of people usually ask me is like, how do you get your cat to follow you? What are some tips or suggestions that you usually can give me whenever like for a cat to follow you on the trails? So with me, I with my cats, we usually hike around uh, minimum being about like three miles and maximum being around 12 miles is what we'll usually go around. I never like to do the 12 miles. I'm not a really big hiker, but my cats like doing it. So I just follow them. Um, but being able to get my cats to follow me, I would suggest sometimes having a second help like set of hands can be very helpful. Um, and if you don't um, have that, um, that's also fine. Like you just have to work with your cat being able to like maneuver around that. But at least for me with my uh, partner itself, like with trail actual walking, I usually like to go first and then my, my partner likes to follow just because my cats like to follow me, <laughs> uh, which is kind of funny. So having a second set of hands, um, with at least like trails like that long can be very helpful. And it could be not even just a partner, it could also be a friend, a family member or anything like that to be able to like have a safe space, carry a safe space and have your material as well separately um, to be able to like comfortably hike these trails as well. Um, but yeah, um, I would also even suggest like a clicker would also be really helpful. And I wouldn't necessarily say that clickers are just used just specifically for training, but it could definitely be helpful for kind of just redirecting their attention back at you. That's what I usually use my clickers for. So when I'm on the trail, my cat's not looking at me. I'll call his name, hit the clicker, immediately redirects his attention back to me just so that he knows that he's paying or that I know that he's paying attention to me and that I'm aware of where he's at constantly is what I usually like to do when I'm on the trail. So but yeah, um, and then I do wanna open the floor kind of for like more questions like in the chat and um, I'm sure like all of us could probably read it and like kind of chime in and pick from those questions. If anyone has any questions or anything like that, they could also raise their hand and you could always chime in the chat and we'll be able to answer to the best of our ability as well. I'm so sorry that for like the kind of confusion with the switching over the rooms as well. So, but yeah, um, I also did have a question, Beth, uh, not um, Hallie, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I did have a question. So do you go like not necessarily just kayaking, but do you go like paddle boarding and surfing with your cats as well? Um, just paddle boarding is all we've done so far. Um, we can't really surf up here. It's too cold. <laughs> we don't really have waves either <laughs> not on the ocean. Um, but yeah, mostly like just paddle boarding at this point. And then she's even started kind of our reel that went viral was her actually jumping off the paddleboard to go for a swim. Um, so like that kind of told us that she was comfortable enough on it that she was like initiating 
swimming as well. So I we hope to get the younger, this, our Cleo, we hope to get her um, paddleboarding, but she's really small. She's like five pounds fully grown. So this backpack, which is an extra small, is too big for her. So that's kind of our next quest is to find a uh, life jacket that fits her. Yeah, I know with like life jackets for cats, especially, it's really difficult because cats have a very small chest compared to dogs. So usually yeah. <laughs> the like, life vests that I have for my cats usually just sink up to their neck and kind of like only their heads are only floating essentially is what happens so yeah. <laughs> travel cat just needs to make cat life jackets so I do agree throwing it, yes. throwing it out there I do agree and I do think that they should have like a collapsible litter box attached to the bottom of maybe their adventure bag so you could unzip it and then like kind of lay it on the ground kind of use it that way and then zip it back up so it's just compacted into one so that's you know my two cents but <laughs> But yeah, like if anyone has any questions, again, feel free to chime into the chat um, and then we could pick apart like or uh, pick them out and just hopefully we can answer them to the best of our ability. Um, but yeah, but if no one has any questions, if any of our speakers want to share like a cool or awesome, interesting story before we have to switch over to the next session and announce our winner. Maybe. <laughs> we just have Cleo. Cleo saying hi. Look here, I'm seeing actually I'm getting a ton of questions now in the chat. Um, so what are uh, what about some cat strollers and backpacks? So I know that Emily did mention the cat strollers and I do use a stroller for my cats for urban environments and urban adventurings. It's really helpful. It's a much bigger space compared to a backpack uh, for like a safe kind of environment for your cats to be outdoors itself. Uh, but I know that travel cats making as um, an actual stroller and then their backpacks most of their backpacks are just amazing honestly um i personally like the navigator for like any kind of trail kind of like hiking or uh the fat cat backpack for any urban kind of adventuring is what i usually like to do and i know that sam's like kind of modified the navigator backpack to best fit for like adventuring outdoors as well so if sam if you wanted to touch up on that or not <laughs> Hi, yeah, um, so I was just saying in the chat, uh, because my cat is 12 and a half pounds and after about four miles, it gets a little heavy. Um, I found some padded, um, like you can switch out on the navigator backpack, the waist straps. So for me, I got some padded straps to help it um, sit like a traditional hiking backpack would. Um, and what, and I love the navigator. That's, I, I totally started out with the, um, the other one, the bubble bag from Travel Cat, and now just take the navigator everywhere because he loves it so much. He's sleeping in it now. And there's so many pockets. Um, that's the other thing I would say, like when you're traveling out, it's nice to have pockets and zippers for resources. Like we were saying in the chat, poop bags or water bottles or treats or the clicker, if you use that or a rain jacket that's happened before too. So um, I would definitely look into that or a backpack that has like what a normal hiking backpack would have lots of options and resources for you and your cat. Thank you so much for sharing. I do want to also say thank you so much, Jess, for kind of just um, chiming in there on the chat, as well as just offering your two cents and tips on adventuring outdoors with like the water and the snow. So I do appreciate that as well. 